brother, you don't know me, you don't recognize me because I'm in an Insight, but I am one of you. It is a really clean RX-8. It, it kind of looked like a S2000 from, uh, from the first because of those taillights, but I, I totally dig it. In our previous video, we got so much accomplished. The guys cleaned up all the plasma cuttings so the rear looked really clean and empty. They reinforced the side areas that are gonna house most of the structural rigidity of the car, and they cleaned up and finished welds that we didn't get to when we originally built the car. So today, I'm hoping to see at least a little bit of progress on the chassis, on the rear chassis itself, maybe some lower control arms, who knows? I'm not gonna to be too aggressive with this, but also working over the rest of the suspension geometry, how we're gonna mount that rear diff, how we're gonna mount the shocks. We got a lot of things to do today. Since the previous video, I worked tirelessly, like I sound like I'm a politician, I worked tirelessly on figuring out how to fit 335s in the rear and just some mind blowing things here, just, just check this out. Imagine you're me for a second, you're working on your CTSV. And the four rotor sitting next to it, which at the time of the viewing of this video is long gone. But you notice that the wheel hub on the V is the same as the Corvette wheel hub on the four rotor. Not a big deal, but something more about that catches your eye. Uh, mind you, I was replacing brake rotors so they look beautiful and shiny. And I realized, whoa, these look a lot like the Corvette ones. I took the wheel off of the CTSV and had rolled it and it kind of rolled past the four rotor. And I thought to myself, kind of laughing, I'm like, hey, they, you know, I could swap the wheels out. And I was like, oh wait, yeah, those are both Corvette wheel hub, you know, what are 120 by five, what God knows whatever the specifics are anymore. I could swap the wheels out and I laughed to myself. But that made me start thinking. I calculated, you're looking at the, the real model here. So when you look at my beautiful Vossen wheels, which is just part of the mock-up, I literally calculated the offset from the center of the 10 and a half inch wheel, which is a plus 40 for those who are wondering, based on the total vehicle width, which is at the bottom of the tire, it's 78, uh, 78 inches wide from bottom of tire to bottom of tire, I calculated the thickness of the hub, the control arms, the spindle, the thickness of the rotor hat, where the brake had to be, all of this. I calculated all of that thickness to figure out where would the wheel touch the wheel hub. Buddy Francis and Mike from Boston know, I kept going, well, plus one millimeter, minus one millimeter. I was, I was frantic because I wanted to get these wheels right. Awesome. Ten and a half inches uh, plus 40, if you're wondering. If you look here, that's essentially it. They're 295s, ten and a half inch wide wheels, plus 40 offset. It, this little website is kind of cool. Watch this. I'm going to plug in, on purpose, I'm going to plug in the replacement tire size for a ZR1 Corvette. Mind you, this is a C6 ZR1. So we'll go back here. And they run a 12 inch tire, or a 12 inch wide rim, but it's a 335 tire. Plus 59, good old offset. Look at that. They're the exact same outer width. Do you know what that means? Th this is hilarious, absolutely mind blowing me that I reverse engineered all of the Hunicorn's work, worked over all, I worked backwards to figure out the exact width of the car, that'd be 78 inches wide, okay? But they shoved the rest of the additional width uh, in the tire for the Corvette inside the car. So I am literally reverse engineering Corvette to make the Hunicorn suspension to make my four rotor. Not only that, I spent probably two hours staring at this piece of paper trying to figure out how we're going to accomplish all of these suspension drivetrain components. What they're doing that's a slight departure from the front suspension is making basically like a subframe. Uh, it's gonna be welded in and it's gonna have like a slip tube inside welded also back to the chassis. But it does create kind of a cradle for the differential. Now the diff is gonna then sit on top of that with its own mounting brackets. But you gotta admit that looks pretty damn beefy. 
really the rear end has to be a tank. That's where the majority of this vehicle's torque is gonna be applied to the ground. Not only are there wider rear tires, but they're also weight transferring, so there's gonna be more weight on the back of the car, meaning more grip on the rear of the wheels, unless it's too much, and then of course they slip. But yeah, if problems are gonna happen, they're gonna happen in the rear, and with the way they're doing it, they ain't gonna happen. I think one of the things that I'm uh, trying to solve, and this is my lack of knowledge completely, is so we'll have the front diff here, and we'll have you know, an axle coming off that side, CV, CV, we're good there. But then this side, we're gonna have a carrier bearing here, and then you know a cup for the CV, and then CV, you know, same shaft on this side. But I was thinking of like, okay, maybe an axle, an axle going into the uh, instead of the cup, a long axle with a flange. I don't know. I and then you know. So basically, the way that uh, even the factory trucks are. Yeah. So they have a brooch too that's inside of the axles. Uh, okay. So I have we have. A, so, this one's not as bad because it's a Toyota, <laughs> but you can see how it's offset. Yeah. You know the gear, the gear is on the other side, okay. and this thing is offset, and the you see it, it's a bit, Yeah, yeah. And it's it's a big plunging one. Good. Okay. Make one. Yeah. I, you know, that's what I. But usually the part that's spinning is yeah. on the inside, and it has a bunch of bolts around it. Like, oh. Uh, okay. This is the Raptor. This one, these things break all the time. <laughs> uh, see how long, see where the seat yeah. is right here? Yeah. See that? And then that's an aluminum case that goes all the way over the door and then bolts on. Ah, I see. So all the spinning stuff is on the inside. Yeah. So basically it would work better for that. Part. You see how this one is? That's just a cover. Oh, that, the, uh, what is that, aluminum? Yeah. See right there? Yeah. yeah. And what it is, it's a spline part that's radiused. Yeah. That moves. So you could basically make a cover, because that's the same part as this. So basically, you could make something that works the same way. It might be a couple of machine parts, but you can make a cone that covers this. So this can be live and just be yeah. spinning. Maybe replace this cup mm -hmm. with, a, you know, the one side of the shaft have the you know thin shaft go to like a flange. But then, like you're saying, having like a cover over it. Yeah, but with the tour, with the, I'll have to have Matt or Corey talk to you about it. Okay. The way that it is, it's a gear, but it's it's a round, so it allows for some movement. Because uh, these things still have suspension travel, but even though the motor is hooked directly, the motor is hooked directly to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the gear, it's a straight spline. So it slips in, but it's rounded, so it can still move up and down. Chassis flexing. Well, the, well, suspension, solid motor, rear end, yeah. you're hooking them both together. So it needs to have a little bit of movement. For this application, it would just stay kind of straight. Yeah. But I think it would work because these things are 900 horsepower in the big ones. So, so they you can, can easily, I think you can easily do that for that. extended fixture point that we can lay rear pivot points on, square them up, figure the wheelbase and everything. Yeah. And then uh, start locking it in, throw some tube at it. And so he was saying something that you guys are gonna do like a slip, slip or? Yeah, we're what? gonna put a piece of inch and a half tube in there and then uh, sleeve it, because the, the chassis is only this wide. So they'll yeah. come out and then they'll bend into that to hold that location. Gotcha. If that's... you want this part to be straight, yeah. otherwise it's just butt welding, it doesn't quite work out. Probably drill a hole here, sleeve it into there so we could rosette it into there. Oh, okay. The other pieces, will, this will be like this long. Nice. So then this piece will slip over that, get oh, okay. drilled and rosette it to that tube, then it'll be welded around there as well. Uh, things that make gearboxes quite big. Uh, when it's purpose built to be a racing gearbox, you can 
take away those type of uh, forces and strictly work with a, a spur gear, a straight cut gear, 